Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna go over the reasons why you may be misunderstanding the concept of macros or macronutrients on the carnivore diet. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and this is Alice and together we've gone through our own transformational journey using the keto and carnivore diets. We've lost over 90 pounds and it's one of our goals to help as many people as possible lose weight and body fat on this way of eating. Before we get into it, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really allows us to spread the message on this way of eating and help as many people as possible. So let's get right into the video. Now, the most common mistake that we see people making when it comes to understanding macros is that they think that macros equals caloric restriction. Now, I think a lot of this belief is like deeply entrenched in some of our past food and dieting history. Now, a lot of people who come to carnivore for weight loss have just tried all of the diets. Maybe they have been yo-yo dieters in the past and the idea of restrictive or under eating is just entrenched in their minds. And this is really not what macros really means. At a very high level, understanding your macros just means that you understand what you are eating. Now, the whole point of the carnivore diet is that we are not restricting ourselves with calorie deficits, which we all know do not work. The whole focus of the carnivore diet is to select the foods that are right for you, right for weight loss, and to eliminate everything else slowly and slowly over time. Now on the carnivore diet, the focus when it comes to macronutrients is specifically on the fat to protein ratio. And what we've seen so far in working directly with people who are on the carnivore diet for weight loss is that everyone's fat to protein ratio will differ when it comes to weight loss success. A lot of it depends on how long you've been doing carnivore for, what your past dieting history is, and some of the intangible factors that come into play when it comes to determining a person's fat to protein ratio for weight loss includes what they were previously doing before they came to carnivore, how much satiation they need, their past dieting history, etc., etc. Another misconception that people make is thinking that they can eat anything as long as it fits their macros. So one thing about macros is that it's just a quantitative measurement for food. It's really just a guide of the nutrient profile that's within the food that you eat. Using this guide can help you develop a proper eating intuition, especially if your goal is fat loss. If I'm guiding someone on how much to eat, I'm not gonna tell them to eat a steak that's five inches wide by three inches long and two inches deep. So think about macros as just a measure of food. At the same time, it doesn't mean you can squeeze in a two pound block of cheese and a bunch of alcohol if you think it fits your macros. A lot of people get macro happy and they try to get creative <laughs> and try to fit whatever they can under the sun to fit their macros uh, so that they can be satiated. But we found that this approach generally doesn't work. They think that they can eat anything they want as long as it fits those guidelines that they've received. Not all food is made equal and your body processes what you put in it differently. But if you're eating a bunch of different types of foods that don't serve you, but still trying to fit this arbitrary macro target, it doesn't mean that you'll still succeed at weight loss. If you approach carnivore like this, then it's just gonna be another yo-yo diet for you. What we've seen so far in working with our own clients when it comes to carnivore for weight loss is that it's not so much the calories that matter, but it's more of what they're eating and what they're not eating. Calories are just a quantitative measure for food, just like how centimeters and inches are a measure for this table. A big question that people have is, do calories matter? Do calories not matter? And they matter to a certain extent. So for example, if you and I eat 8,000 calories, then yes, we will probably both gain weight. But if you and I eat 1,500 calories or 1,600 calories, will we gain weight? That's where there's gray area and that's where we say that calories may or may not really matter and, and not all calories are made equal. Calories don't really matter on the carnivore diet, especially if you're just eating whole real foods, at least not in the traditional sense where we have to do like caloric restrictions and caloric deficits. When you're eating a standard American diet, it's just so easy to overeat all of that processed foods. Our hunger hormones really go out of whack. And hey guys, if you're enjoying the video today, we just wanted to announce that our 30 day carnivore meal plan and recipe guide is officially available for pre-order. We will leave the links for the pre-order down below in the description. Our 30 day carnivore meal plan comes with 30 days of meal ideas as well as 20 bonus recipe cards for you, as well as specific instructions on how to adjust the quantity sizes to meet your weight loss goals. All of our recipes contain detailed nutritional information and macronutrient breakdowns, as well as instructions on how to modify the recipes so that it can suit your diet, whether you are a strict carnivore or a loose carnivore. We're only accepting pre-orders for a couple of days at a special price, so make sure you check the description box below for more information if you are interested. 
The next reason that you might be misunderstanding the concept of macros is that you need to understand macros are very individual independent. Now, this is where we always say that you need to test and learn, you need to adjust and adapt. There really is no one size fits all for macros and that's because we are all individuals and we have different bodies and our bodies respond in different ways. If there was some sort of cookie cutter solution for weight loss, then we wouldn't be sitting here right now and you wouldn't be watching this right now. The different foods impact our bodies differently and this is why a lot of people say that they find carnivore to be confusing or why there's so much conflicting information out there on how everyone has a different approach to carnivore. And again, the reason why macros are so different for everybody is that because at our root, we all have different metabolisms, different dieting histories, different eating intuitions, genetics, health concerns, all sorts of things that make up who we are. So our recommendation when it comes to macros and to fat to protein ratio specifically is to test one fat to protein ratio and see what works for you and then make adjustments if it doesn't work for you. Macronutrient tracking allows you to use it as your guide. You really need to see how your body reacts, how you digest that food, and how you feel. It all goes back to being consistent with a way of eating over an extended period of time so that you can really see the results that you're going for. Another misunderstanding with macros is that there is variability. Now we're not saying that there isn't issues using macros as a guide either. Just going from one food tracking app to another food tracking app or one website to another website, the macros for a certain type of food can vary greatly. There is no guarantee that a ribeye from one grocery store will have the same fat and protein content as a ribeye from another grocery store. Some of the biggest variability we see in macros are especially in the higher fat cuts of meat, like brisket, chuck roast, pork belly, and things like ribs. But you will see more accuracy in things like ground meats, which have a set amount of lean meat and fat in each blend. There could be huge macronutrient differences in the amount of fat and protein you're getting, depending on how the cow was raised, how the cow was fed, whether the cow was grain fed or grass fed, as well as the individual genetics of that cow. Also, that fat content can change whether you're eating choice, prime, double A, triple A, Angus, Australian Wagyu, Japanese Wagyu, uh, A5, A3, A4, or whatever sort of rating system that your country uses. The problem with these food trackers or websites is that they don't take these individual differences into account. It assumes that a ribeye is just a ribeye or a chicken is just a chicken, and they state that they all have the same macros depending on the cut. Macros are meant to be taken as an approximation and can have significant variability. Because of this variability, it's probably one of the reasons why traditional or bodybuilding style of diets focused on leaner cuts of protein like chicken breasts, uh, white fish, or extra lean versions of ground meats. The fat content in your meal plan is just a lot easier to control. You may have seen some videos on YouTube of those traditional style diets or bodybuilding diets where they eat a bowl of egg whites, some oats, and a scoop of almond butter for those healthy fats. However, on a ketovore or a carnivore way of eating, we really want to lean into those fattier cuts of meats because we want those nutrients. The flip side of that is that there's a little less control of the amount of fat we're actually taking in. However, people typically have the same buying, shopping, and eating patterns over a period of time. They usually go to the same restaurants, the same grocery stores, and are loyal to a certain number of locations. This is how macros become more accurate over time and the longer you stick to your carnivore diet. They provide the same tracking point because the grocery stores will likely be using the same farmers and the same suppliers, and the fat and protein content will stay more or less consistent. For us, we typically go to two types of grocery stores, one for bulk purchasing like Costco, as well as a small local grocery store for smaller items. When we look at the meat that we buy, the fat and protein content generally remains the same over time. Now, if you're new to the carnivore diet, we do have some free resources that we will leave in the description box below. One of them is a free guide on how to lose fat on carnivore based on our five step teals approach. And another is a free training on the top mistakes that people make that keep them stuck with fat loss on carnivore. So again, do check out the description box below if you are interested. If you liked our video today, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Again, it really allows us to spread the message on this way of eating and help as many people as possible. Leave us a comment down below if you have any more thoughts on the concept of macros, whether you have any questions about your macros, and we will try to answer them to the best of our ability. Until next time!